Hi, I'm Cheryl Betts. Welcome to my Ava Artist Tour from my studio in East Charlotte, Vermont. I'm beginning the tour outside because I consider it an extension of my studio. I come out here to think, sometimes work out here, and you'll see why when we step in. I'm in a very tiny space. It's converted one car garage. I have every nook and cranny filled to the gills. Um, a lot of my equipment is on wheels so I can move it around as I need to as I change from one project to another. I have movable walls since my wall space is rather limited. Back here I have storage. I have flat files with papers and works on paper. A lot of uh, various things I pick up when I go for walks, bark, seaweed, shells, uh, pods. I work mostly in mixed media. Um, Primarily oil paint, wax, ink, colored pencil, graphite, oil pastels, oil sticks, and I work on paper, on wood panel, on canvas, on linen, on aluminum. Uh, recently I've been working on UPO, on found paper, these are on found paper. Um, I work in series and I usually have a number of series happening at the same time. I find that it, it keeps me from getting stale with a particular piece and it also, when I'm learning in one project, I bring to another project. I've been working with photography for many years, but only recently started incorporating it into my painting. And it started with the short stories series. And it started with the tiny ones. Um, my photographs are either found photographs, photographs I print from glass negatives, photographs I take with an old Polaroid or a uh, pinhole camera that I made many, many years ago. The small pieces from the series began because of my love for daguerreotypes. I love how they're difficult to see, daguerreotypes are, and that you have to stick your face right up to them to, to, kind, to make out what's going on in them. And that when you do, this whole world opens up. And the world that you are in just seems to disappear. Eventually the pieces got larger as I started thinking more about memory and how it is in a way fictitious. Um, you can have the same memories as the sibling about some situation growing up and you would not be able to tell that you were talking about the same occurrence. I also like the point to the universality of all experience in these. And I like it when viewers bring their own memories into the, into the pieces when they're looking at them. Over here, uh, Hair Breath and Flowers Fall, like all, all my work, um, a lot of it is about the actual process of art making. And these incorporate more time and change into the work. And uh, I work in numerous layers to bring that time and change in. And I like to scrape back through layers to in a in a way to symbolize this digging for the truth and searching for answers. 
And these large drawings that I hope to show in the windows at Ava, they're on translucent UPO. So I was hoping that you could see part of the building behind them um, in a way to bridge the past with the present. It had been forest, then it was factory, now it's Ava. Maybe centuries from now it will return to forest. And I was also thinking of the fragility of our environment, like many of us are thinking about right now. So they're in pieces, and I've stitched them together with these suture-like stitches in a way to hold and, and, and keep them safe. The vines point to the interconnection of all life. And in a way, they resemble the veins in our own bodies. If you'd like to see more of my work while my website is under construction, go to Instagram, cm.betz. Thanks for visiting. Hey there, my name is Mary Mead. This is my studio. I'm going to give you a little tour. Um, it's not empty. There's always work going on, even if a lot of it's in the show. All right, so this is a piece I did about 10 years ago, a very large scale woodcut. Um, I did with a Dremel, a sort of, I treated it as an etching almost. In other words, I put the ink in the incised line and then I inked over it. It's a, it's a woodcut mono type. And this piece kind of led me off in the direction of working in woodcut almost exclusively, even though I'd been teaching in almost every medium, screen printing, lithography, etching, uh, relief, woodcut, uh, which sort of sent me firing off in different directions, but I really settled on woodcut as my primary, primary medium. Okay, so in this show, uh, there's a couple of pieces I'll show you here that didn't make it into it. Um, these quilted pieces, this is the third one. Here's the second one I did. And then here's the first. And they're not in the show because it just didn't flow with the rhythm of it. Okay, and these were these were images that you'll see in the show um, that were created from plates that were cut on a CNC router by my friend Owen Harris. He's absolutely a brilliant master furniture maker. We had a collaboration last year, um, and he. He very graciously, generously offered to make, to cut a bunch of plates for me. So these are cut with a CNC router. They're a little more meticulous. And then I love the rawness of the hand cutting this piece. The imagery is plant matter that I've taken from my gardens. I have probably five or six perennial beds. And I put them on a overhead projector and project them onto the woodcut and draw on it and then cut away. So here's another print. I'm always interested in kind of chine collé or collaging onto my prints. This is a woodcut. I'm interested in the marks. I love the marks. Sorry, this place is a little mess. Here's my friend, Kermit, Anticipation of Halloween, my son's hero. Uh, here's another board that didn't get in the show. 
I think I'm going to do something to it. And then all the sort of uh, chaos that it's probably in most people's studios. I'll take you in my house because it's very much inspires me and it's very much a portrait of kind of who I am. Here are some pieces I've collected. Sergio Santa Maria, a Mexican artist I met who was visiting when I was teaching. Here's a cast paper piece of mine hanging on around the corner. Brilliant Jerry Bergstein. My friend Rachel Gross, a fellow printmaker who's having her show. And one of my spit bites. So I live in an art filled house. So I might call it a little bit chaotic, but my friends inspire me. These are Tom Woodbury prints. Wonderful photographer. And Richard Ryan, this beautiful spit bite. It's originally my brother's, but he gave it to me very generously. My friend Eric Katzman. And look right over the children's, my, my grandson's um, toy chest. And up here, a piece I did almost 10 years ago, I think. This was etching, woodcut, reduction. So this is a little bit about who I am, like everybody, like every artist. I have an extensive collection of books I constantly reference. Um, and coming in here, some more of my prints. Beautiful painting, portrait of my son Edgar by Clifford West. Jim Stroud, master printer. One of my first and most influential artists, Michael Mazur. So that's it. I hope you come to the talk on the 20th. I hope you enjoy the show. I'm Jenny Swanson, and I'm in my studio in Cornish Flat, New Hampshire. This is the upstairs part of my studio. More of the making is downstairs, and then I have a separate um, building for, for my kiln, my glaze kiln. Um, this is where I bring pieces um, up to look at them, where when they're either on a wall or a pedestal, and I'm trying to figure out the vantage point of how the piece will be viewed. Um, I am formally educated in ceramics. I started in high school. Um, it's, this has been kind of a lifelong pursuit for me. Um, I went to college at Bennington College and I studied drawing and ceramics. I was an art major. And then I went on to get an MFA in ceramics at Cranbrook Academy of Art in Michigan. So what I'm doing these days um, is I'm working in high fire glazed ceramics. So um, you can see some of the pieces that I've been making here. Um, they're all fired at a high temperature. Um, I Fired, they're fired at least twice, sometimes three or four or five times. Um, most of these pieces are put together by collaging the small elements. And some, some of the pieces are made from stoneware, some are porcelain. You can kind of see the difference in the light-colored pieces. Um, the overall piece is, it's made usually out of a flat piece of clay, a slab of clay. It's made the way that you might make a plate or a platter, although these, um, these pieces for me have like no relation to function. They're really meant to either go on a wall or a pedestal. Um, and be looked at and 
They're very textural with all the added pieces. Um, a couple of these are pretty early pieces. This one here is called Gathered. And this one here, which is called Floating. Um, where I was trying to adhere the pieces together with glaze, um, rather than just using the clay to fuse the pieces together. So a lot happens in, in the glaze firing. There's a lot of um, flow and melt and sometimes warping and I'm working with those processes, um, enjoying some of the unexpected and kind of mysterious parts of the ceramic process. <laughs>